keep on going here with our next lovely storyteller. She is one of my favorite people in Santa Monica. She's basically like the fairy godmother of Santa Monica and of Shine and of Santa Monica Rep. Um, she is from England. She was born in 1929, oh so long ago. And she was married for 60 years um, and she lost her husband in 2010 and he was, he was an amazing, wonderful man. Um, she's a mother and a grandmother and a great-grandmother, and she's been a teacher and a research interviewer and a social worker, and she's super fashionable. And you saw her earlier this evening as a Helen Reddy backup dancer. So let's welcome her back to the stage, Sheila Rasnick! The year is 1999, and I am 70 years old. i had been suffering with very bad indigestion for years, and my doctor had always prescribed different medications for me to take. However, on this particular day, I was in such agony that I was admitted as an emergency to hospital. During the week, Various tests were held, but there were no beds in the surgical ward, so I was put in a medical ward. Incidentally, this was in England, and all the wards were mixed. The first thing that made me feel uncomfortable was during the ward rounds, when the nursing sister would say to the doctors, oh, she's nothing to do with you. Not as one would have expected, oh, this lady is Mr. Joseph's patient. I had various tests, including an endoscopy, which I must say, if you'd asked to have one without an anesthetic, because it's easier for the staff, just refuse. Because I had the camera caught in my hiatus hernia, and my fingernails must have hurt the nurse as I was in so much pain they were digging into her. At the weekend, I asked if I could go home because they'd found nothing wrong and I was no longer in pain. So they agreed that I could come as an outpatient for a barrier meal. I went home and felt so ill on the Sunday that at 8 a.m. on the Monday morning, we returned to the hospital to see if I could have the barrier meal, only to be told, oh, your papers are still up on the ward. And anyway, there's a two weeks wait as an outpatient. My husband and I decided to go to the ward. Very luckily, the surgeon was there. He took one look at me, sat me in a wheelchair, and ordered a barrier meal. All I can remember after that was the doctor saying, Oh, your stomach's upside down. Were you born like that? I very much doubt it, I've said. I've had two children and a hysterectomy. Surely someone would have noticed. They operated the next day after the surgeon told me what he was going to do. But it was explained that I would be on bed rest for a week as the stomach could only have two stitches to hold it internally, though there were many external stitches. I came to, after the surgery, in much pain to find myself in a, a six-bedded ward with five men, which felt very uncomfortable at the time. But they were all good to me, however. But as they went home, different men arrived in the beds opposite. One man used to strip off. Another was a convict handcuffed to the bed. And another was clearly mentally ill. I told my husband that I would not be able to close my eyes that night. When I told the ward sister, she just put all my belongings on my bed and wheeled me into another ward without introducing me to the other patients. Of course, I was in tears when my husband arrived to see me. 
Several things occurred during my four weeks stay in hospital. And I decided that instead of complaining, I would keep a record of everything that I felt was not appropriate, as I felt so tired, so fired up inside. When I was discharged at home, I got my friend to type a letter for me and sent one to the Prime Minister, who was Tony Blair at the time, and copies to the Ministry of Health my local member of parliament, age concern, and the local newspaper. The, <clears throat> the newspaper responded immediately and sent a reporter and photographer to report my story. And so we began action on the wards for a whole year. This proved to be very successful with meetings once a month with staff, patients, and relatives of patients who had concerns about some of the practices in the hospital. We really rocked the boat and made people more aware to voice concerns if something was not right. I also learned that you can't change the world but you can make people more active to speak up about things that needed changing. They still have mixed wards in London and over England, but we were still able to make many changes for the good of the hospital. And I think that I was able to change people's attitudes towards patients who are sick and need a lot of loving care. Comment, share, and subscribe to our channel and post any and all videos that you think might be inspiring to others. Thanks for watching, guys.